All right, let's do part three of this training, completing the square using algebra tiles. This may be my favorite thing to do with algebra tiles, completing the square. I think it just adds so much meaning to a procedure that sometimes does not have a lot of meaning. Um, and I think it's, it's something that students can see how it all works, see how all the pieces work together and make sense of it. So let's get right to it. All right, I'm gonna show you this, um, this group of algebra tiles here. And I want you to just think about everything you know about this value here. You can pause for a minute, maybe jot down a list, or you can just continue with me and I'll tell you some things that you or your students may come up with. All right, let's see if you notice these things. The value, it's x squared plus 8x plus 16. The value is also x plus 4 times x plus 4 in the factored form. The value is also x plus 4 squared. It makes a square. <laughs> and it's a perfect square trinomial. So that's important to talk with students, especially as we move into completing the square. That idea of a perfect square trinomial is important to the concept. So a perfect square trinomial here, it has the same two factors. Um, x squared plus 8x plus 16 is a perfect square trinomial. Okay, let's play again. This time, come up with everything you know about this value here. Okay, before I show you some things about this expression, can you make it into a square? You might want to pause and try for a minute. Try the best you can, and then I'll show you something. Okay, here we go. All right, so you may be saying, whoa, what'd you do there? Mine did not come out that way. So let me explain. We have this value of 4x squared plus 12x plus 4. It doesn't make a square, not a perfect square trinomial, but it can almost make a square. It was just missing some pieces, right? If you tried to make a square, maybe you were missing five unit tiles down there. So if I want five more unit tiles, if I want my five so that I can make a square, then I also need a negative five. That way I keep the same value. And that's where this idea of completing the square comes from. What do I need to complete a square? And in this case, I needed five more units. So in order to keep the value I actually wanted, I also have to think about five negative units. And here you can see I rewrote the expression as 2x plus 3 squared minus 5. And this visual is showing where I got that. Okay, so we're gonna do some of these. If that was a little bit like, whoa, where did that come from? Let's try some more out. Okay, so today we're going to complete the square. That means we're gonna take a given value and create a square or complete a square. And we may need to add or subtract some units to do so. Then we're gonna write an equivalent expression based on what that arrangement looks like. All right, let's try this. Try to make a square out of x squared plus 6x plus 7. May not be perfect, but try to make it a square. You can pause here, and I'll go ahead and show it now. Okay, so when I tried to make this square, I needed two more unit tiles. They're kind of in bold here. Did we add any? Yes, I had to add those two. Okay. So if we add two, we're also going to have to subtract two because we don't want to change our original expression. That's important to keep in mind. I don't want my value to change. So I've got these two negatives kind of floating out here. All right, so now I'm going to factor this square like I just would normally do. It's now a perfect square, so I can factor it as x plus 3 squared. And then I take care of those two that are floating out there minus two. It's important to stop and think, why are we subtracting two? So we don't want to mess up this sign here. We added two to make our square. So we have two too many. That's why we're subtracting two. Okay, and you might be like, well, I don't know if this is equivalent. Uh, I don't know if I did this right. Students may be thinking that. Tell them, hey, stop and check it. You know how to check this. By now, they're, they should be familiar with multiplying. They could go ahead and multiply out that second expression and see if it is the same. All right, try this one. x squared plus 8x plus 18. Try to make a square and then see if you need to complete the square. 
All right, so here's my arrangement. I made my square and I had two extra tiles this time. So this time I didn't need to add more. I had two that won't fit in my square. So my expression is gonna be x plus four squared plus two. All right, try this one out. Pause if you need to. All right, on this one, I have these three extra units floating out here. They didn't fit in my square. So think about how that will affect the expression. I have x minus three squared plus those three floaters. All right, let's watch how a student may use an area model to complete the square. All right, so they say I'm gonna focus on x squared plus six x, this first part. Let's move plus five over to the side for now. Now they're gonna think about where to put things. x squared goes in its usual spot. x times x is x squared. And then the x tiles. If we're gonna make a square, what do we have to do with those? The only way you're gonna make a square is if it's the same length and width, same height and width that you're working with. So the only way we're gonna be able to complete the square is to take our x tiles and put half one way and half the other. Same thing in this area model. You're just gonna take whatever is in the spot of B, whatever's in that middle term, and split it in half. Now we have our three X and our three X. Now we know that that's gonna give me nine units down there because I have to have X plus three and X plus three. If I have nine here, I'm gonna subtract nine from the units I had, okay? If I add nine, I must subtract nine. And that's gonna give me my little floating number out to the side. Now, we moved kind of quick, but once students play with the algebra tiles for a while, then they're gonna see that every time they take those X tiles and they split them in half. They kind of just get used to that motion of how do I make a square? The only way to make a square is to put half of the X tiles this way and half this way. That's gonna be over and over. And it almost like just gets in their head to build this intuition of why we take half of B. Okay, and so then that gives us X plus three squared minus four. All right, if we were gonna do it with algebra tiles, here's how it might look. It's important to discuss how this relates. Now this area model, that's just one way a student may show it. You may have other ways you wanna to go to. I think this relates nicely to the algebra tiles. Whatever helps the students think through what they're doing. All right, maybe try it out with this one and kind of see where you would place the numbers as you're figuring it out. Pause here if you wanna do it. I'll go ahead and place some numbers in here. All right, I'm just gonna scoot that 22 out to the side. X squared goes in its usual spot. I split up my X tiles or my X values. So I have five X and five X. Now I know my factors are X plus five times X plus five. Five times five is 25 for that. That's how many units I'm gonna get inside that area. So if I add 25, then I wanna subtract 25. Now, if I kind of simplify what's going on here, I can see my factors are X plus five squared and then I have minus three. All right, let's do one more. I'll let you try this one out. And now here we go. So let's scoot that plus nine over to the side, fill in our X squared, split up the X's. So we have minus four X and minus four X. Now we know our factors. Now we know how many units go in the area, positive 16. If I add 16, I need to subtract 16. Now I can see my factors, X minus four squared, and then minus seven. Okay, and if you um, usually just go right to the standard algorithm for completing a square or to this procedure, I hope you're seeing kind of where these uh, different steps come from. A lot of times we tell students to take, you know, that C term and just scoot it over. And um, then we tell them to take B and take half of it. So these steps that usually we tell students how to complete the square, now they see where that came from. All right, so completing the square is probably one of the most difficult things students do in Algebra 1. I think this is a way to help them make sense of it. I hope it was helpful for you to see. 
And if you've got your algebra tiles, you know, find some more problems and play with it. I think it's kind of fun, especially if this is the first time you've done this. You might be like, whoa, I need to try this a few more times. And that's perfectly fine. The more you do it, the more you'll get ideas for how you can show your students and what problems you can give them to try out. Thank you for joining me. If you're looking for more resources, check out this lesson pack, my Teachers Pay Teachers store. It has lessons for multiplying, factoring, and completing the square with these PowerPoints. That's what I pulled some of these slides from. It has worksheets and quizzes as PDFs. It will guide your students in building a true understanding of polynomials. They'll learn how to build the models with the algebra tiles, and then they'll learn to do the written box method area models and eventually the standard algorithms. Lots of the slides that you saw today were examples from these lessons, but it is jam-packed with even more. It also has digital algebra tiles ready to go for the different problems so students can manipulate the tiles on their devices if you have that especially if you don't have sets of algebra tiles for every student to use. They can just move them around, work out the problems. The important thing is that they're getting to explore how these tiles work, getting an idea of why the different steps in the procedures work. That's the important thing, whether they're using the hands-on manipulatives, whether they're using digital tiles, or even ones you make out of paper. They get to play with it, figure it out almost like a puzzle, and then get to see how the math comes together. So the PowerPoints guide them as they explore the different ideas. It'll take them through all the different procedures. They'll get to see how it may look without algebra tiles and try that out and get to see all the connections. It'll also take them all the way through completing the square and even solving equations. So it'll go from algebra tiles to using standard algorithm, plus all the practice you need. These worksheets are ready to go. You can print them out for students to practice and help them really build that understanding. I really wish more and more teachers will use algebra tiles. That's why I did this training and that's why I hope that you will put some of this to use in your classroom. Be sure that we can keep in touch. You can find me on Instagram at rise.over.run. My TPT store is Rise Over Run, and my website is riseoverrunteacher.com.